part three is finally here. No room for introductions. Y'all know who I am. Y'all know that we're back again. Once again. And this is when it all comes together. Loxton, what do you have for us? In part three of the reset theory. I am ready. I'm ready like Spongebob. It's about to go down. Oh my god, it's happening in the manga? I literally just saw this the other day. Oh my god. That was dope. That was a great effect. Oh, it's Bird Keeper Toby. I like that song. Yes. So get on Skype now, would you? <laughs> Dude. Oh, all right. I'm Pokemon Project Rainbow, the game that will have a lot to do with flowers, is in fact Sun and Moon. Mm -hmm. and I have speculated on the. But you skipped Generation Six. I did, didn't I? I'm a ninny. So I looked into it myself. And <laughs> the number of love and mental balance, and I have a feeling light shining through the prism tower and sundial is going to play a big part in the upcoming games. Also, Holy crap! Six, started in all. Mm, yes. Anything <laughs> else? Yes. Kind of six is also three, and it turns out that twenty also means death and rebirth. Oh my god! The meanings of the numbers that form them, and in the case of twenty. Zero is death, oblivion, nothing, a void, and two is duality, a they balance both sides. In this case, you have a life which is one side, and then you die only to enter a second life, a second era. Twenty is death and rebirth. The overall theme of Pokemon has of late. Excellent, excellent. I can't, I can't even. Uh, oh my God. Done. What? What does that have to do with anything? No, wait. It's numerology again. The way Japan writes their dates is year, month, day. Month, day is the same as in the US, by the way. And this means you write out the release date as 1118. And 1118 in numerology means, quote, you create your own reality. <laughs> this is literal very end of this call. I'm done! It also means, quote, you are nearing the end of a cycle in your life. Prepare for great changes in the future. Ha, <laughs> too much. Speaking of the anime. That's so yeah, deep, yo. So... Holy In the Pokemon world, Arceus is the equivalent. Right, right. So we'll be yep. especially considering that the Arceus is a thing in alchemy. Whoa. Did you know that? No! The things you've been telling me, Lux Angel, and Deus, meaning God, are all high God. But this is a combination of two words, so if Arceus is actually a thing by itself in alchemy, <laughs> then surely the origin has more relevance. Aspect ...of the astral plane, which presides over the growth and continuation of all living beings. It is the glue that binds the spirit world and spiritual powers with the physical world and matter. Without the Arceus, souls would have no guidance upon the deaths of mortals. Without the Arceus, spiritual earth and life energy would slowly fade, and eventually life, reality as we know it, would be no more. Wow. The Arceus is at the Arceus, one can transmute men can use that to merge the two separate worlds. This is insane. One into Arceus is Arceus. Well, duh. No doubt about it. They do seem to be a people that have a symbol for every. Oh. No. Don't tell me. Let, let's let's see it. This whole time. Come on. Four. More suspense and drama. You sicken me, Loxton. Here you go. What? This doesn't look like Arceus at all. Isn't this a Jewish thing? Yes, this is the Kabbalah, the centerpiece of Jewish mysticism. What and the? I don't have to explain an entire religion. Extremely long and complicated story short, it explains the attributes of God, the tree of life, creation, and its process. Basically, this is like the Pokedex entry to the Jewish God. Okay, but as you mentioned before, most alchemists were what? Christians, not Jews. 
Right, though remember, the Christian God and the Jewish God were once one and the same in the Old Testament, at the time of creation. The most important time for Arceus. Ha! Right. <laughs> of course! So this is the Jewish... Of course. That's a snake. Zygarde, I presume. Yep, in Judaism, there are two primary serpents. Oh my Satan, god. Which caused Eve to take from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and will also bring about the end. Just like the two Zygods in the anime. But still, beyond some minor connection in interpretation, I don't see how the Kabbalah connects with us. Oh my god. <laughs> Used by practitioners of white magic. Holy magic. Oh my god. I, yo. That's there you go, Loxton. You're the man, Loxton. Our entire bodies. Exactly. Like wow. We've been hiding these references to alchemy underneath our noses the whole time. These so these mother. Oh my god. Generation six. Ever. Right before Armageddon. Oh, and did you notice that that Snorlax's Z Stone is blue, just like the Generation One trainer who mentioned that his Snorlaxes wake up only about. Oh one. my god. Chapter 12 speaks of a dragon that came down from the heavens, and in chapter uh -huh, 12, I know where this is going. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. Uh, of course! So was given authority by the dragon. I bet there's just one more. Beast. Who can wage war against it? Where is he? I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. BAM! It too had the same authority. As we know, in Pokemon, Groudon and Kyogre are the legendary Pokemon, or the beasts, of the land and sea. Yes. And the dragon. As when we die, we return to the earth. In Revelation 22:13, God is speaking. What the? Uh... I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Death and rebirth again. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Blessed are those who wash their poor remakes will be part of the seventh gen. Just as the Gen 3 remakes are now part of the 6th gen, and yes. so on and so forth. Yes. He would make a top to reset everything. The Alpha and the Omega. Oh my Just god. Imagine what sort of power a primal or mega Arceus is capable of. Oh, or even oh, a mega oh. primal Arceus. Let alone Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina being primals. With the power levels they used when creating the universe. Surely they could reset it. Easily. In fact, that would go along perfectly with the Biblical Armageddon. Firstly, the whole point of Armageddon is God bringing judgment to humans. Uh. And Arceus's main move is the move, Judgment. In fact, this move appears to cause fiery hail, meteors, to rain from the heavens, which Revelation says is one of the main things that will happen during Armageddon system, and basically every patent and rumor surrounding it seems to point at it being a handheld console hybrid. Oh, meaning it's the next handheld system, so the next Pokemon game will be on it. Uh-huh. And there's never been dual releases of console Pokemon games. Yeah. So in this case, the Gen 4 remakes may wind up being just a single remake. A remake of Platinum, rather than Diamond and... Yeah! Also, Platinum's symbol is the same symbol as the... Yeah, yeah, my man, Lostin! Let's go! Now, the Gen 4, or at the very least... The Pokemon on the cover. I can't see. Yo, he, the this guy, the make, You're give right. this man a, a prize, yo. The NX also being Nobel Peace, Peace Prize. I could see dual games being games, but rather the legendaries on these games. Arceus in the middle for the singular Gen 4 remake, or side note, it could also wind up being a whole new game, Eclipse, it's possible. Anyway, then Solgaleo and Lunala, Groudon on Kyogre, Xerneas and Yvette. It could be a hierarchy of legendary, <laughs> or perhaps a reference to the seven days of creation. Why did. Oh, I love him. God or Arceus create the sea, and then the land, and finally, life. And eventually, thanks to Eve, death. You know what wow. it is? Originally, that b. Revealing greater emphasis on the destruction of the universe. Or, like you said, like in the Bible, it's total destruction and recreation. Ah, uh, the biblical end times. Let's go back to that mm, city that's so crazy. Because God's glory replaces the sun and moon. His glorious. Again, take the sun and moon symbols and combine them, we get platinum, which is a bright white color. Arceus. 
And guess what the walls around the city are made of? Too late, they are encrusted with diamonds and pearls. What? No, because... I know, I know, I gotta specify something here. Ah! Uh. around the stones listed here, you'll notice none of them actually quote diamonds. But it's diamonds rather than all hard gemstones. In other words, you could translate the Bible's original text as all of these stones were diamonds, because in this case, diamond refers to all hard gemstones. And plus... Wow. Yes, the biblical end times. And there are a number of things that the Bible says are warning signs <laughs> that the end is near. One that is... Oh! Uh, the of earthquake, the tree of life and all. Well, guess what the serpentine dragon at the bottom is capable of causing in its mythos? Earthquakes! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Times it could bring the end. Bring Z. And plus, this would mean Zygarde doesn't directly trigger the Poke Apocalypse, but indirectly triggers it. Uh... Zygarde is the Pokemon Devil. Zygarde is? But Yo! Tina being the Pokemon Devil is fan speculation. Though, all of this is too, but the reason Giratina is <laughs> yeah. seen as the Pokemon Devil specified to be Satan the Devil. But if Satan takes on the form of the seven-headed red dragon during the Armageddon, then that doesn't exactly fit. Right. Let's get to that. They had a literal Satan the Dragon Pokemon. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> or at least one that was so obvious. So instead, just like Giratina, they put a lot of sixes on it. Six heads, six little armpits. Plus, it's covered in hexagons, the six-sided shape. And Yo. Its thing is also a whole new head. And the anime recently showed that its tail is also a head, meaning Perfect Zygarde does indeed have seven heads. I can see that interpretation. And one swimming around Asgard as it bites its tail. Nidhogg and Jormungand. Wow. I'm pronouncing that right. Arceus is the alpha Pokemon. Zygarde is the Z. Alpha and A are the same symbol in both the Latin and Greek alphabets. So here we have our creator. Yo! I have a feeling that Sun and Moon, along with the inevitable Gen 4 remakes, will be the biggest Pokemon games yet. Hell yeah! Especially since now they have a potentially much larger audience. Where my pre order? Since I explained in this video, we'll make so much money off of it. Hell yeah! Oh, okay. I'm. So, Giveaway? I'll get like two copies. Let's go. About the, end, that the eclipse is a time where the spirit world and physical world are at its nearest, and the border between the two is the Arceus. What better time to reset the universe than while space is aligned that makes Arceus at maximum power? Oh my! Next point. All these fan pictures! Arceus priests literally using alchemy. And we see Arceus combined because the legendaries are a fire dragon type and an electric dragon type and fire and lightning are both plasma when powerful enough. Google it. It's genius. Anyway, they are Didn't know that. On medieval the plasma. What of it? Well, from around the year 300 onwards, the Greeks and Romans would put an emblem on their shields of some of their more prized. Christian no rights. way. It was an emblem to represent the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection all in one symbol. Death and rebirth. So a cross. PS looks nothing like a cross. Actually, she roll. And it looks like this. Oh, if you just swapped out the X for an S, it would be a perfect fit. And the X and this spiked out S aren't actually too different visually. And wait, no. Is that an alpha and omega symbol on either side of it? <laughs> yep, yep. And do you want to know why this was designed? Oh, <laughs> first, like on the grunt's heads, or more obviously, Right behind the emblem on the staff of Getsis, the true leader of Team Plasma. If that's not obvious, I don't know what is, especially considering the vast amount of conspiracy theories around. Getsis's name is derived from G-Sis. Jesus. Oh! G-Sis, a set of notes that is referred to as the devil in music. So I did some digging and skull and femurs remain, and they would put them in the symbol of the chi Yeah. Just like Team Plasma, this symbol originated with knights that became pirates. Oh, oh here's a question. That's crazy. Why would the Roman you know, make type null. Make type null. What? Here we go. Oh, yeah, type null, the chimera, the artificial god Pokemon, the philosopher's stone Pokemon. Yeah, I should have mentioned that sooner. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> yeah, I... So, Chimera, stating that it is man-made for yep. people merging other Pokemon. And Type Null's base is canine-like. 
Yep. I'm sure you understand. Yeah. I do. The philosopher's stone. I said in my video. Like the power of God, scroll its power level, just as Cyrus did to Dialga and Palkia with those very same symbols. This is still so crazy. Dude. So how much is left? <laughs> All that is left is one minor point and one major point. So you know how Professor Oak's cousin is in Seven Minutes? Hey. His name is Samson Oak, and in the Bible, Samson had long hair as his defining feature. I said that! And he was known for his feats of strength, the first of which was slaying a lion, and the last of which was destroying a pagan temple. And as far as the old Catholic Church was concerned, alchemy was paganism. Also, the name Samson means... Man of the Sun. Bruh. Think of it, what was the original? Is Samson Oak gonna fight Sol Galeo? Yeah. And Samuel in the Bible was known for appointing the first two kings of Israel. Oh my! Are you serious? Think back to when I called you that very first time. Did I bring up anything that we haven't talked about yet? The Pokemon trading card game. So each generation of Pokemon, there is a new series of cards. And within them are different. Oh sets. my god. Expansion is that Pokemon that don't Mega Evolve are finding ways to push past the boundaries of their normal evolution. Yeah. They push ever nearer to perfection. And of course, when they do this, they turn gold, one of the perfect metals. In a way, they are becoming enlightened to a new, higher state of being, a whole new evolution, breaking past their barriers. And funnily enough, the current plot is. Let me just read it to you. An amazing <laughs> discovery. Pokemon Break Evolution opens a new path to power that builds on a Pokemon's existing strengths and creates all new battling options. These new Pokemon Break come from twin worlds. One of technology, um. one of nature. And all the wonders of Break Evolution. <sighs> Next expansion. A rift torn expansion reveals the growing rift between the twin worlds. As the rift tears through the skies, more Pokemon are drawn into the struggle. Can they mend the rift and save both worlds from collision chaos? Do you see where this is going? <laughs> Next, reality shifts and is remade. Mega Alakazam EX sees the field and two Pokemon worlds join together. In the Pokemon trading card game XY Fates Collide Expansion. I can't believe finally, this. The final set in the XY series, Evolutions. The Pokemon legacy evolves. All trainers and Pokemon grow and evolve. And this expansion restores the very first Pokemon trading cards to glory. The classic hard battling Pokemon and old school trainers are reinvented for a new generation. Ask Professor Oak to get you started. I need to get back into the game. That's it. I'm I'm in. I'm in. Trading card aren't enough. And plus, if Sun and Moon just so happen to introduce 128 new Pokémon, which is very doable, then guess what Gen 8, which is the reboot as we've established, would need to total 1000. 151. Oh! Gen 1. Currently, there are many reputable sources claiming that Nintendo and Game Freak are currently working on a singular remake of the Gen 1 Pokemon games on the Nintendo NX. Surely, a handheld console hybrid is capable of vastly changing Pokemon, and a redo of Gen 1 will get a lot of those who left Pokemon into. Oh, hell yeah! I'm, oh, man. I will get an NX today. I will get an NX today. Massive games also refer to dual worlds. Pokemon is life, son. So remember that book from the third movie? Yeah. Oh, let's go. That is described as an artist's rendition of what never before seen legendary Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. It also predicts the reset. What? So in the movie, the book is shown to also be a foreteller of the future, as events in the movie have been in the book all along. And now, this is a bit of a stretch, but hear me out. The first page we are shown is this one, with a bunch of unknown taking the shape of an atom. Oh my god! Of course we know that Arceus Look at the it! power of the unknown to create the universe. Look! And now, I saw the shape. this old robed man here? Why are there Greek columns here? And does this group of unknowns say anything? I and a group of others spent like three hours on this, and no, for the most part, these unknown are just broken up chunks of the alphabet. But you 
interestingly, the only missing letter is G. And there are repeats of other letters, so there's no reason for there not to be a G. But maybe, maybe there's no G because this old robed man is blocking it, perhaps. Maybe this old robed man with all of these Greek columns creating an atom is the big G. <laughs> He's God! <laughs> but most Arceus is the most mythical Pokemon of all mythical Pokemon. And since this book is in universe, an artist's rendition of what some never before seen Pokemon may look like, the artist may have come to the conclusion that, hey, if humans are smart, God is probably a human of sorts. Also, side note, G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. And is in the middle of the Freemason symbol, which is <laughs> to also be a group of modern day alchemists and mystics. And Team Galactic's logo is also G. <laughs> Getting into some real conspiracy theory stuff now. Okay, but what's next? Uh -oh. This page shows us Entei. So skip ahead from the creation of the universe to Gen 2. Next, we are shown Crystal Towers. Pokemon Crystal came out almost a year after this movie did. And the next page has a fairy. Skip ahead to Generation 6, and we now have fairy-type Pokemon. Next page, a sun legendary over a tropical island with hibiscus flowers. Obviously, this is sun and moon. And oh then... Oh my god. The creation with the unknown again! And the cycle continues, with Entei once again. Whatever happened to Cyrus? The leader of Generation 4's Team Galactic who wanted to reset the universe. Do you know what? I don't know. In fact, no one I'm done. In the game, I need a seatbelt. And the manga, he just left into an alternate space time. In the anime, he personally possessed the Algar and Palkia and had them create an entirely new universe for him. And when his glove built to use the original power of Arceus, he entered his new universe, and that was the last we ever saw of him. And thanks to Oraz, we know for a fact that the multiverse is canon in Pokemon, specifically one universe with mega evolution and more advanced technology and one without it, and less advanced technology. Like the card game. The two worlds are merging. It's literally all coming together. Perhaps in Sun and Moon, the portal that the Eclipse causes will open a portal between these universes, and they merge like an Eclipse. And perhaps this will all be directed by a new, almost godlike Cyrus, who also opened a portal from his universe to the universe in Sun and Moon playing God. But just playing is not enough for him. With the power of Mega Evolution and Primal Evolution that exists in these universes, he could cause Arceus to do everything for him. <laughs> he could take over Arceus, Primal Evolve it, and bring together not just two already conjoining universes, but the multiverse. All Cyrus wanted to do was make a void for himself, for everyone, to destroy the universe and recreate an empty one. So either in Sun and Moon or the Gen 4 remake, the bad guys will win. But why would they let the bad guy win? Oh, of course the bad guy isn't going to win, at least not entirely. Here is a small <laughs> example of what I think is possible. <laughs> Though you might as well consider this some educated fan fiction. At some point, Team Skull will take over the observatory. Using that, they will know exactly when the planets will align, as well as the next eclipse. Solgaleo, or Lunala, depending on your version, will also be used by Team Skull, or the Aether Foundation, we'll get to that. They will be used to perfect the alignment, or to hold the sun or moon in place to elongate the Eclipse. Doing so will allow the world of the dead, or the spirit world, to merge with the Pokemon world, or this will open a portal in space-time to the other, already confirmed, other universe. The ones we played in before X and Y. The universe without Mega Evolution. Perhaps they will merge, just as they do in the card game. Of course, though, this upsets everything. So Zygarde comes in and learns that the only way to maintain order in this world is to either destroy the humans causing this, or end the world, or more likely, end the other world, the alien parallel dimension. But Holy. Zygarde could be taken over. And this could be done by the Aether Foundation wanting to create a paradise, done by Guzma wanting immortality, or by Cyrus wanting to just end everything. And Cyrus could find his way into this new Mega Evolution universe. This universe with alchemic magic. 
mega evolutions, and primal evolutions. With these new powers, he surely could neutralize the multiverse. Meanwhile, directed by some higher force, the Aether Foundation creates Type Null in an attempt to create Arceus for reasons I'll explain later. They too want to merge universes, though for the benefit of everyone, at least from their perspective. So more yeah. things happen wherein Arceus is summoned, or it came here by itself to either further protect the world as it has in the past, or continue the process of Poke Armageddon that Zygarde started. Humans have sinned far too much and will be judged. However, Guzma and or Cyrus and or the Aether Foundation, someone gains control of Arceus. No While way. All of the greatest Pokemon trainers from the franchise, Red, Blue, Cynthia, other champions, previous playable characters, and you, the player, go to stop whomever is controlling Arceus. <laughs> Many fights with powerful Pokemon are had on the way, but in the process, Arceus has already begun the universal bonding, bringing the entire universe together to reset it. You work your way up and wind up fighting Arceus itself, acting as a totem Pokemon as it creates other legendary Pokemon to fight alongside it, and the battle continues. Eventually, you beat Arceus, but by beating it, you only beat the possession out of it. And now it attacks Cyrus, and or Guzma, and or the Aether Foundation, all the bad people, into oblivion. The day is saved, but during your battle, too much time has passed. It is too late. The universe is no more. It is only you, the player, and Arceus. Arceus apologizes, and perhaps through unknown lettering, explains that it must recreate the universe. But now, since you saved it, it will recreate the universe how you see fit. What? Of course, it will be scripted. A universe of peace and love for Pokemon. A universe where no one can any longer take advantage of Pokemon. I and use them for can't evil. Or at the very believe least, this. Not as easily. And Arceus makes it so. A new universe. A new game. The reboot of Pokemon is shortly after on the Nintendo NX. A console-level main Pokemon game set in another brand new universe. It gives Game Freak a chance to fix some things, rework some things, retcon a few things, and to just bring it all in for one epic Pokemon adventure. Cyrus and or a Gen 4 remake may not even be involved. It could entirely just be Guzmo or the Aether Foundation trying to merge the worlds, either just these two universes or the spirit world with the world of the living together. I would love to play that, John! All kinds of <laughs> there are many, many possibilities. And that is just one of them. Will Sun and Moon be the final game? Will Neo Platinum be? Will there be a whole different third one that I didn't think of? Only time will tell. Yeah. You know, it sounds like a bit of an overly hopeful fan fiction, but it's just an example. I get it, though. So many of the bad guys want to reset the universe. One of them actually manages to, but at the very end, you win, and the universe is recreated peacefully in a much better way. It's beautiful. The character, the player character, you, literally create your own reality, just as the number 1118 symbolizes. But I have to wonder, since we brought up Arceus again, that symbol around him, the path of Saturn, or the practical Kabbalah, when around type Null, it holds back, suppresses it, it controls it, and even around Yalgon Palkir, it does the same. But then, what is it doing around Arceus? <gasps> Something has been in control. And whatever it is, it must be an ultra-powerful beast, don't you think? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, dude! Oh no! 3.5? Really? Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening to me. It is so hot oh, out here. Oh. But seriously, thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you especially... Locks, to dude! Man. Priest of Gamers for helping me explain you for any YouTuber, please give them a dollar. So please continue. Yo, I'm about, I'm about to give you like three. <laughs> Dude. My God. Loxton. Loxton. Oh my god. Uh, 
Do you want to know what I thought about that video? Do y'all really? You really want to know? Okay. First of all, I don't even know where to start. The fact that for like he he went over so much, he covered a lot, and now he left with a 3.5 question. Someone's controlling Arceus? But he's God. But he's God, dude. I just, honestly, I just can't wait to play these games. Because of how everything has been coming out slowly and surely. And everything has been getting proven. And all of Loxton's points ever since part one have just been more and more factual. Like, it, it is pretty scary. I've said this a million times in all my other videos. It is like he is laying the foundation out for this game. All the fan fiction. Fan fiction. That shit is real. It's gonna happen. There's no way. There's no way. Sun and Moon, Neo Platinum, I don't care. Yo, as soon as pre-orders for NX come out, I'm pre-ordering NX. Because I got just in case. In the mood, just in case. I, I'm I'm sure they're gonna have a game for Pokemon come out for as a launch title. That would be dope. But Sun and Moon, guaranteed. <sighs> All that symbolism, man, with the 1118. Crazy. Other than that, guys, as you can just tell, I am in just complete disbelief and shock that we are now, like, this is not, this is not even it. This is not even the final part. This is just part three. Part three, this is the three point. <laughs> Yo, but shout out to Loxy, man. You did a great job. If you if you do watch my videos, like, for the reaction sake, I, I'm definitely going to, like, send, like, three bucks or something to the Patreon because this is... All that time, like I already know how it, what it's like to spend hours and hours and hours on videos. Obviously, being a YouTuber, but dude, that is that's freaking awesome, man. I'm just like he. I, I'm done. I'm just gonna keep saying the same things over and over again. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Please shout me out on Twitter at Uchi Games. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's talk about this. My brain is just done. I'll see y'all later. Pokemon, son, it's real.